Good afternoon. Who's heard of Procter & Gamble? Well, I can see from how nice your hair is and how clean your clothes are that you're all very used to using our, our brands and how clean-shaven that you are, that you use our, use our brands uh, uh, here in Russia. Let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Matthew Price. I run Eastern Europe, uh, which is uh, Russia, Ukraine, and uh, Belarus. Uh, I joined P&G in 1987. I studied uh, economics in the UK. Uh, you couldn't do business back then. We believed it was much smarter if you studied classical civilization or some esoteric uh, thing. So you people are very fortunate to be able to study uh, business and you should take full advantage of it. I joined P&G uh, 87. I worked in uh, beauty care in the UK. And then in 1995, I was uh, moved as a uh, marketing manager to Greece, uh, where I worked on our paper business, which is Pampers and Always. So, femcare uh, business. We talk about this a bit later on. Uh, Greece was a very productive assignment for me because my wife gave birth to twins. So, I... I have big experience of Pampers. I can change, <laughs> I can change a diaper uh, at night with the lights off uh, in, about, uh, in about eight seconds. So we talk about uh, Pampers uh, later on. Then after Greece, I went to um, work uh, in a regional role, global business unit. Um, I was responsible for Central and Eastern Europe, and I started in 98, and I came to Russia in July, just before uh, the Russian crisis in August. And I've worked in Central and Eastern Europe for 11 years. Uh, in 2001, I was made uh, general manager of Balkans, which is all the crazy stuff. I had Romania, Bulgaria, Kosovo, Albania, Bosnia, uh, all ex-Yugoslavia countries, except Croatia, which was too sensible for me. So, and then I came here uh, in 2005, so I've been here um, four and a half years, and I love, I love living in, uh, in Russia. Now, I'm going to try some, uh, some technology here. So, okay, I've explained to you what Eastern Europe is, um, but we, we basically have uh, offices in each of, these, uh, e each of these places, but basically we run the commercial operation uh, out, out, of, uh, out of Moscow. A um, little bit of history, you already very kindly explained this uh, for me, but we started in 1991, we were really one of the first consumer goods companies came in and we came in a joint venture with St. Petersburg. And the other thing I just wanted to point out is uh, our, we were signed, our incorporation was signed by somebody I think you might have heard of, uh, uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich, right? So uh, um, he signed when he was de deputy mayor. Um, and we slowly expanded our distribution from 93. Um, we acquired a plant in Novo Moskov. We now have five plants across Russia and Ukraine. We produce most of our products locally. Um, we bought it for $30 million and we've given it around a $250 million paint job. Uh, um, we've invested a lot of money. It's now P&G's second biggest detergent plant in the world. So uh, it's been a big success for us. This was when we acquired it in 94. Um, during the 90s, our business grew. MDO is what I run. It's basically a market. We became in the top 10 uh, markets for P&G in the world, despite the fact we'd only uh, been in existence for 10 years, and we got up to $750 million. And we have leading brands in most, unfortunately, not all categories. Hopefully some of you will join us and make us leaders in all the categories, right? So, um, then we had, um, we had the, the crisis um, where we had massive devaluation of the ruble. This was two months after I started my assignment. It was a baptism of fire. Um, and we, we basically had a massive meltdown of our business. H however, um, what was very interesting was uh, by 2002, our business was back to 98 levels. In other words, it recovered, it recovered pretty quickly. Now, I'm not going to give you all the numbers because some of you are going to go work for my competitors like L'Oreal and Henkel. Um, but P&G Eastern Europe is our fifth biggest business in the world. The US is the biggest at around 40 billion, uh, then the UK, uh, then Germany, then China, and then Russia. 
Okay. <laughs> and uh, last year we were going to beat China. I, have, I don't know China so well, but I think they have more Chinese than Russians, right? <laughs> choo choo, uh, but so. We wanted to overtake China, but unfortunately the crisis stopped us. But we're within 5% of, of China. Um, I'm not internally competitive, but I want to beat, uh, beat them. Um, uh, I won't take exact number, but we're around $3 billion, $3 billion business. So it's not, not, not small. Um, we also acquired Gillette in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2005, and we integrated it, and uh, we, we've grown it. And actually, it's become one of our biggest brands. We also int integrated Weller. Uh, um, and we acquired a company called Gala in, uh, in, in Ukraine. We have um, market leadership in most of the categories. We have laundry, um, market leadership, and we have various brands, which I'll go through, shampoo, femcare, diapers, Gillette, dish, uh, fabric conditioners. Uh, um, I won't go through all of the categories, but we're in a broad spectrum of uh, categories, household cleaning. Um, we do research and we ask consumers what they think of our brands and we are consistently marked highest on various elements. So for diapers, we ask, Pampers is seen as the driest diaper in the market. You're about to learn a lot about diapers in a minute, by the way. I'm going to tell you all about it. Uh, um, and on all of the attributes, say for head and shoulders, we're marked highest for dandruff removal, uh, um, Pantene for shiny hair, always for protection. Uh, um, aerial for stain removal. So we, we have pretty good image and Gillette uh, um, is a highly thought of brand, really an iconic brand uh, uh, here in Russia. If you look at our business model, I know that you MBA types like, uh, like lots of diagrams with balls on. So this is the one chart with, with the balls on. I do it for you. And this is really our um, model we have at the, at the, really at the center of our business is um, our brands. And our brands are everything to us. They are like our children. They stand for something in the consumer's mind. They stand for a particular image and consumers trust them. Um, and we have around this, we have certain ways that we think about the business. The first is consumer understanding and innovation. This is really the foundation of everything that we do. Understanding the consumer and giving her what she wants and providing regular innovation on our brands. And we try to innovate on our main brands at least every year. Many of our brands like Fairy, Fairy in the UK is 70 or 80 years old, but we keep innovating on it every year. So if anybody tells you at your business school that brands have a life cycle, I tell you it's not true. It's not true. You can keep uh, brands uh, 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 growing. You just need to evolve them for the consumer benefit. The second thing is really the go-to-market. This is how we get um, the products to the consumer. Um, across Russia, we have a variety of distributors. I won't tell you how many stores we, we, we cover, but you're top somewhere between 50 and 100,000 stores is what we cover directly uh, uh, with our distributor. Uh, people and we try to turn this into a competitive advantage to make sure that we have the best share of the shelf The shelf is laid out for the consumer so that she understands it and that we have the best uh, relationships uh, with uh, uh, The modern retailers in Russia which are expanding and we'll talk about uh, in a minute down here um, I I'm a very nervous paranoid person So I've always believed that there would be another crisis in Russia from 98 so, so we have always behaved like there would be another crisis. Uh, I will talk about some of the steps that we took, but in terms of, um, I have a saying, uh, in God we trust, the rest pay cash, okay? Uh, so so we, we have much of our business is paying us uh, very low days of receivables because I always felt that, you know, if there was an exchange rate devaluation, we would have an issue. Um, and we try to keep our costs down, and we've tried to work on local supply of ingredients and localizing as much of our production as possible because it insulates us from, uh, from a crisis.